Hey everybody, welcome to a TFL Now live show. And we're talking Defender today and more specifically what happened to our long-term Defender, which you probably haven't seen on the channel for a while. Yes, now we're not talking about the first Defender or the second Defender, we're actually talking about the third Defender because we had three Defenders yes. that we went through. Now to be fair, there were some unusual issues with them, but the third one, I think we can all agree, other than some tire issues was actually quite good. Yep, and I, I hate I hate going over the story again, but in case you're a new viewer, we custom ordered one. It had all the off-road gear, very base model, four-cylinder. Um, that one had some issues, uh, primarily an engine misfire, which needed a new engine replacement. Rather than getting the engine replaced, we opted to get another Defender. That one, unfortunately, was totaled due to a, uh, a problem with the wiring harness that was cut through and they were installing a winch at the dealer. And then we got a third one. It was blue. It looked very similar to this one in the studio. And actually, that one was was flawless so we drove the beans out of that one for many thousand miles um, and then eventually we ended up selling it a little while back to fund the Ford Bronco so that is the story with the Bronco now there are a couple things that you need to keep in mind the Defender itself has a lot of components in it that some of you guys might question whether or not are off-road worthy and I think that's a fair question because some of them are not that would include the tires, especially on the model that we had. Now, one of the things that we did was we took it on an off-road adventure versus a Jeep Wrangler 4xe and right like a day after we bought the Bronco. Was it a day after we bought the Bronco? Two it, days? It was super soon. It was right after we bought the Bronco. And we did a, a very popular off-road video where we compared the three of them. And unfortunately, the biggest issue with the Defender was the fact that the model we had only came with, what, 20-inch wheels? Yeah, so we had one that was specced off the lot and it had um, the advanced capability package. Right. And it had this exact wheel tire setup, so 20 inch wheels with the Goodyear Wrangler tires. And unfortunately, these wheels are just too big for really serious off-road use. And with the low profile tire, these got pinched pretty quickly the second you air them down. And we went through a couple of these out on the trail. However, um, something worth noting, if you get the four cylinder, you can get it with 18 inch wheels. Which we did with our first one. Yes, and those are really cool. Steel wheels, they look fantastic. You can get a big profile tire on there. Um, and, and you know, I know like initially I wasn't that excited about the Defender. However, after living with it for a few months, and then of course after driving this one, which has been the press loaner for um, the last week, they are very good vehicles. They have so much potential. Had they gotten it right, right out of the pike, I think that that would have been probably one of our vehicles of the year. However, there are a couple issues and I think one of them starts under the hood. Now this one has a straight six turbocharged engine. Oh, this took me forever. Yeah, it's, Tommy, you, you're better at this. In than between I the E and the N, yeah. Okay, so um, can't really see much under there, um, but it, this has a mild hybrid, doesn't it? Yeah, so the four cylinder, the thing you have to remember about the Defender is that this is a really big car, right? I mean, it's potential to have uh, seven seats in it. It's like full-size SUV. Yeah. I mean, we're talking like almost Tahoe territory size. I, I'd say in length at least, yes. Yes, and I think the four-cylinder is a little small. However, this engine is phenomenal. So this is the three-liter Ingenium straight six, a P400, and this is easily one of the best straight sixes on the market. So 400 horsepower, but it's buttery smooth, lots of power from the turbo, and just a lovely, lovely engine. We lived with this one in our blue one for a number of months, and it was perfectly reliable. Always started, even in the really cold weather here in Colorado. Was Great it engine. Eight-speed auto? No, uh, eight. Yeah, eight-speed eight speed automatic. automatic. Mm -hmm. yep. So if I recall, uh, for amongst the things that was sort of surprised me, it was actually a little bit more efficient than I thought it would be. Yeah, I mean, it's a, considering the size of the SUV, we're talking like mid to high teens, which isn't too bad. And this is not even the top dog engine because there's a V8 coming. Yes, there's a lot of things that are coming. We're gonna talk about the future of uh, Land Rover in a minute, uh, but I think, Zach, do we have anything yet or we're gonna keep on going? All right, we're gonna keep on going. So, um, oh, we, we just got a super chat for $5 from Nabil. Nabil? A uh, 22 Defender 90S owner with almost 12,000 miles on the clock already. Nice. Not a single issue yet. People need to stop dogging on Land Rover. They're just as reliable as any other brand. Slight a concession here. The good years suck. So I, I think that like reliability is such a difficult thing to measure. And there's so many um, folks that have different stories. 
Now, I think that the new is Land Rovers are so much better than the old ones from like the early 2000s. Yeah, so we were I would just agree. talking. Nathan, you had a Land Rover. What was the ownership experience okay, like? Okay, well, I had a 1996, I believe it was, first generation Land Rover <laughs> Discovery. Yes. And it had a manual transmission, very rare in the United States. And uh, I was constantly working on that vehicle, trying to figure out bugs. It would heal itself often, and then weird things would happen. <laughs> Leaks would happen, then they would seal up. It was a very unusual vehicle, one that my wife hated because it dropped gallons of oil on our driveway. The thing about that vehicle was it was very good off-road. It was actually a fairly comfortable on-road vehicle. It held seven people fairly comfortably. And other than the swing gate, which made it not great for you know lumber, it was great. I really loved it. I really miss it. That V8, though, was underpowered, yep. and it didn't get very good mileage. Well, and it, it, the, the fuel economy was similar to the head gasket economy, in that you would change the head gasket about as often as you would change the fuel in that vehicle. I only had to change the head gasket once, but I went through uh, a lot of other stuff. That's not bad for driving at 300 miles. <laughs> only once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it was pretty rough. Um, but, but the point is, is that that was old reputation and it didn't get much better, especially going from the 90s through the 2000s mm. up until, say, about, well, last year. Well, um, <laughs> I, think, I think Nathan's being a little hard. I mean, I think that the Defender is a much better vehicle than the old one. So I've talked to a bunch of folks after we had the issues with ours that have owned these. Um, and the, the vast consensus is, especially if you get the six-cylinder, I mean, people love them. They really do. And the wait lists on these are absurd. They're insanely long wait lists to get these Defenders. Now, what do you think of the design? Do you like the design? I absolutely love the design. Really, I'm touching the only part that I don't like. The burgers? Yeah, these don't, uh, the burger grills. So these um, don't make any sense. You can't step on these, trust me, because um, <laughs> you will <laughs> crush this area. These are not built for weight. Um, I was told by some people that maybe some accessories can go here. These can pop out. Maybe you can put some sort of thing on the hood in order to hold a spare tire to prevent it from being, you know, crushing the hood. I guess, maybe. Um, I don't really understand this component, but almost everything else here makes a lot of sense. And after driving them off-road and riding in these, I really do like them. Um, we took one, the blue one to Moab. And it was the best vehicle we brought to Moab at yeah. the time. I mean, what you have to consider, and I was kind of in the boat of like, ooh, I don't know if I like the new Defender design. It's not like the old one. But if you look at like the proportions, approach angle and especially the departure angle are out of this world. Actually, some of the best in the business. Really good. And once you lift it, what does it go to, 11 inches? Uh, some, yeah, you, with the air suspension. Yeah, the air suspension can really get it up there. Now, there are people who prefer the steel suspension. This ride height, as it is right here, is ideal for people like me. Yeah, I think it's a... Honestly, the design has really, really grown on me a lot. And um, I, especially like the rear end, in case you want to come over to the back. Like, the square still is a little weird to me. But the Alpine windows on the roof are phenomenal. Really cool stuff. And They're then, actually usable. Yeah, the vertical rear portion back here is just stunning. Like, it's, it's such a cool design with the spare tire on the back. So they did a good job kind of maintaining, I think, some of its heritage back here while still modernizing it in uh, a very 21st century way. I want to point something out that there are other Range Rover products out there that mimic where the tire used to go on this, if yeah, you remember. that's right. And those are really horrible. Like the Discovery has this weird like um, asymmetric rear end where like the spare tire should be, but, but it isn't. Not. Yeah. And it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> this makes sense. And actually looking out of the vehicle and I, I own, we all own vehicles that have spare tires mounted on the back, even my little Blazer. Mm -hmm. I can't see out of that thing. This, I can actually see out of pretty good. That's a great point. Yeah, this is low enough to where I have actually just enough room to see over here fairly clearly. And I actually do like that as well. I, the other thing too, this vehicle is not equipped with the tow hitch, but these things tow a tremendous amount, like upwards of 8,000 pounds when properly equipped, mm -hmm. which is like absurd amounts of a towing capacity. And Case, let's check out the payload on this one. So Defender 110, this one is an SE. And let's check out the payload capacity. Where do they hide it? Um, Somewhere over here. Well, it's oh, British, so... 825, which is pretty decent. Not as much as I was kind of expecting. Um, I've, I've seen Defenders with well over 1,000 pounds, but it all depends on configuration. What do you think of the interior? Well, that's a funny thing. We actually talked about this before we went live. The interior setup 
This color looks really good, but Tommy's mentioned before, it doesn't really seem to wear very good. Yeah, um, like especially the seats. So yeah. I think this one has 4,000 miles on it and it's super easy to stain. So I don't know if you can see that, but like there's, there's all sorts of blue lines from jeans and it's quite hard to get out. Ours was even worse because it had these little cloth inserts, which really were very hard to clean. Actually, someone um, emailed us, they bought one and sold it because they were so sick of trying to keep the seats clean. But apart from that, the interior design. I love the design. I'm going to go to the other side because I wanted to show you something that I actually think is really cool. It's just so cool, like this one long continuous panel that extends across the dashboard. I think that most people who build cars nowadays waste the opportunity to do something with the dashboard, right? When you think about dashboards, by the way, you may notice my voice is very quiet. I'm not sick. I'm just being too loud. Um, <laughs> this whole area here is storage. Storage, storage, storage. It's cool, right? Yeah, my wife would adore it because she absolutely floods my glove compartment in my regular car. I think this material is cool more, too. Like this marbly stuff on the steering wheel. That's kind of cool and it's got an interesting finish to it. I love the steering wheel design. And this cargo area down here is actually really cool too. This is extra stuff and it goes all the way back here where my hand goes, this way, so. We need to talk about the box. So, I yeah. hate this box I, this is probably my least favorite part about the defender is underneath the seat is this big protruding squared off um, seat mount but it, it it extends the length of the passenger footwell here or the driver footwell and what that means is like if you're on a road trip i mean you can have your feet obviously here but if you want to like put one back maybe it automatically hits this box and it just it drives me crazy so this is my least favorite part about the interior but overall, pretty good, right? Yeah, I agree. I th it's structural, I think, this box thing. I, th otherwise, <laughs> they wouldn't put it there. It doesn't make any sense. The gear lever, I didn't think I would like it first because I thought it would be like a BMW. It actually works pretty good. And there's, yeah. it's got a nice notchy to feel to it. And I like that because I hate just having a little paddle shifter that goes back and forth. So this is a 21 model year. Um, and the new one, actually, they, they updated the screen. So it's a little bigger. The screen's a little laggy, mm. but it works um, as it's supposed to. And let's check out the... Um, kind of yeah, money some, here. <laughs> some of the, this is a weirdly equipped vehicle, to so, be honest with you. 62,000 starting. This one is 69,195 as equipped. And what Nathan means about weird is it has like the off-road tires, but it doesn't have the off-road packages, which is kind of funky. Um, $69,195 does have the optional full pano, which is cool. Now, one interesting thing about the Defender, which I think is unlike any other vehicle on the market, you can get it in five seaters like this one, six seaters with a bench seat in the front and a seven seater with a th th uh, two, three, two in the back, which is funky. And when you look at like its competitive set, and Nathan and I were talking about this earlier. Nathan's going to disagree with me, but I do strongly believe if you want a seven seater SUV to take off road, that's luxurious. This is it. Like I personally don't like the Yukon 84 off road very much. I know Nathan probably disagree and I'll let him talk in a sec. I don't like the Tahoe Z71. Like they just feel very lumbering and not very maneuverable off road, but this feels like it's got true off road heritage. Um, it's actually, in my opinion, better than like the Lexus LX, right? Land Cruiser was impressive, but Land Cruiser's dead now. So, I mean, this is it, in my opinion, for off-road seven-seaters. What do you think? I think in terms of a luxury vehicle that has a lot of cachet based on its name, this is a really good start. The GMC Yukon AT4. You like it? I love it. I absolutely off -road, love it. Mean? Yeah, it was, it was decent off-road. This is better. This is easier to maneuver. It's not as wide. Okay. This has a uh, better approach and departure angles, breakover angles, probably better on this too, I would imagine, especially when you pump it all the way up. Mm. So this is a better off-roader. However, this vehicle, <laughs> how do I put it in the most polite way? Guys, if I come home in an AT4 to pick my wife up and go out to a nice event, okay. If I come home in this and take her out to a nice event, yeah. You see where I'm going with this? <laughs> and that's the whole point. It, this really appeals to both sides of all aisles, I should say. It really does because it's really good looking and its street presence is one of the best out of anything that Land Rover, Range Rover have built in years. That, especially from the back, this thing really has some serious street presence. And for those of you who are like, oh, it's a Bronco, a baby Bronco. Baby Bronco is that high and that long. This thing is huge compared to that. And when you see them next to each other, and we do have an article, I think on TFL Off-Road, 
that shows the vehicles next to each other, you'll see the differences, and there are some significant ones. So with regard to presence and ride, we have another $5 super chat I wanted oh. to mention from uh, Nabil. Thank you. He says, uh, must say the coils are amazing on the Defender, the stock coils. The main drawback on the Defender is the air suspension, going back to reliability. Right. Um, he says, also the P304 banger is more reliable. Again, that's kind of well, subjective. Well, I, I, I hope it is, but the one we had wasn't. And here's one of the things to keep in mind. We did have an early production version. Yep. And by having an early production version, it kind of takes us out of the whole fold with people talking about reliability down the line and that's a fair point and we are willing to admit it we're not here to badmouth and or compliment this thing we're just telling you what we think so with that being said i think honestly that the six cylinder so far has proven to be more dynamic more capable of moving this thing at high speeds and it's power for crawling is stupid good. So one thing I do want to point out, which is a common misconception, um, people think that these are BMW engines because BMW also does a four cylinder and a six. Mm -hmm. These are not the BMW engines. These are uh, JLR engines. They are specifically designed for Jaguar Land Rover units. Um, and specifically, they're called the Ingenium. Ingenium, yeah. Ingenium, which I blow all the time. Every time I say that, I just say it in another horrible way because I torture the English language. But this is, <laughs> this is confusing because the new full-size Range Rover is getting a BMW engine. It's getting the twin turbo V8, but the Defender, four cylinder, six cylinder, unique to Land Rover. And I will have to say, I do somewhat disagree with that previous commenter. Um, coil springs are cool, but I think the air suspension is what is iconic to Land Rover. And I know in the past they have been problematic, but that is what gives this vehicle so much incredible capability off-road. It's just the ability to jack it up to such insane heights. See, uh, and I'm on his side with the coil like springs the coils? Beca because I, I've had suspension go wrong before. <laughs> so having something that was reliable as coil springs, which are simple and just do the job. But that like floaty air. I, I agree. I agree. And, and, but the, the coil springs are a really good compromise. And so there's sort of a give and take with those. So he's basically saying that he has a four cylinder with the coil spring. So it looks like he got the lower model in terms of like, mm. and that makes sense. That's more my cup of tea because okay. I prefer the cheaper one. But Tommy and I were talking just off camera. This is getting an upgrade with a bigger brother. Oh yeah, what, what can you explain that? Yeah, so I believe it's known as, th this is the 110 and there's the 90. And then there will be coming the 130. The 130 is, I believe, longer, but about the same, everything else so essentially the same powertrain and everything else however they're also bringing a v8 a powerful wow. v8 to the mix for the land rover brothers or sisters if you want to call them that funny part about that is that those vehicles <laughs> i mean everybody's going electric nope. not so much here big fat v8 is going to one of these i love that also there is a now this is just a rumor but i want to throw it out there with that 130, with the longer wheelbase, you know what you can do with that, which Land Rover's done before? You can make us incision and pickup truck bed. Just think about it. They've done it before. They could do it again. <laughs> it would sell Be cool. like hot cakes. Yeah. That's what I'm saying right now. So Andre asked a good question. What would you guys get, Defender or Grand Cherokee? So I have, I have a video. Is this our Andre who said this? It's not. <laughs> Andre, go home. <laughs> no, this is different Andre. Andre with an EI. Okay. So I actually have a video coming up very shortly um, comparing the two. Mm -hmm. Personally, between the WK2 and the Defender, so the, the, the current generation, the older Grand Cherokee, mm -hmm. I actually like the older Grand Cherokee a little more because it's very simple very utilitarian however the new one the new grand cherokee is trying to be so upmarket where i really think it's targeting this and i think land rover does a little bit better job with the upmarket feel in turn well and, and also money wise so snoot value i hate being that guy because i'm not however as i said before the last time i brought <laughs> one of these home my wife went crazy my daughter went crazy my sister went crazy everybody who's seen it me driving it thinks i'm more handsome or smarter which I'm not, but most importantly, this vehicle has presence, the Jeep doesn't. So yes, I would choose this over the Jeep. Now with that being said, my money on the line, a used one of these versus a used Jeep, I think I'd probably go for the used Jeep. That's interesting. Yeah, I think it'd be actually more reliable, which is sort of saying something right there, isn't it? Old timers is curious to what Jeff thinks of the Rover. Jeff unfortunately isn't here, but he loved the back. Can we show him the trunk space case? Yeah, let's have a look. While we're back here. Um, 
insane space in the back of these defenders. Um, and one of the things that Land Rover does really well, and I don't know why more companies don't do this, I'm calling you out Jeep, is the, um, the back of the seats have this like texturized plastic. Yeah. So and like dogs. Hey. It's, it's a, such a good idea, and they now they understand their uh, owners. But I wanted to point something out. Tommy's right that there is a ton of space. However, let's pan back a little bit because I want to show you what the negative is. Yeah. All right. Now let's say you've gone to your Costco or whatever Sam's Club, and you're starting to get the stuff in there. You notice how much space is taken up on both sides with this door sill area. Mm. All of this. This is not great for those people who are looking for an easy thing to lift up and over into or storage space inside. Check out the party trick though, the air suspension party trick. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay. I don't know if you guys are noticing this, but it is dropping one, two, so like three inches almost. A couple inches, yeah, bring yeah. it down. And it does make it a lot easier. We do know some rather short people out there who would be able to scamper up and put something in here a little bit easier. But it's because of this, if you look, come over here. Maybe you can see it easier. See how all this extra space here is kind of gone? When you're used to a hatchback, you don't lose that space. And I just wanted to point that out to people who are thinking about buying one of these. Um, this one doesn't have the third row seat, does it? No, this was a two row. Okay. That's exactly right. So what's under here? I bet you're wondering. Let's see. All right. Probably this Matt's more. happy. <laughs> ah, no spare tire. Why? Because it's on the tailgate. <laughs> I'm very familiar does with this. Does this have jack. tow hooks, Tommy? Um, it does have tow hooks, but they are buried in the front and then optional in the rear. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got a good question from Ted, Tad, sorry, Tad P. Thank you for the $5, Tad, really appreciate it. Um, he, Tad has got a bunch of cool vehicles, including a Hummer H1, and he's looking to replace his FJ, I assume FJ Cruiser, probably not FJ40, um, with one of these. Would you consider owning one out of the warranty period or leasing in warranty? So. Um, here's the deal. This is my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, anything pre-2006 Land Rover, I mean, they're fun, but they're very, very problematic. 2006 through 2009 LR3s, personally believe, and based in science, best, most reliable Land Rover ever made. Um, Post-2010 LR4s, problematic with tensioners and timing chains and that issue. Um, Defender, I think is going to be pretty solid. This is just me and initial ownership reports, but I think that these might be okay. But it's, I mean, we're just gonna have to wait and see. Yeah, and I would agree with him for one simple reason. Tata, who owns Land Rover, really made a big point about saying, we need to prove to the world we can build a high quality world vehicle. One that will sell in all markets, and most importantly, get us out of the doldrums when it comes to reliability. And so they really did research and put a lot of money and investment behind this vehicle. Hopefully they got it right. They may not have. By the way, I wanted to show this. Tell me this, this has, yeah, here we go. A warning triangle. Warning triangle. You might want to get used to this if they didn't fix the quality. Hey, Nathan, while you're in there, I've got a few more things to rattle through here. Okay. So uh, more context and another super chat from Nabil. Thank you very much. Five dollars. Thank you. Um, says also worth mentioning value. Got my Defender for fifty nine thousand. Now worth over sixty seven thousand after putting almost twelve k miles on it. Current state of the used car yeah. market. Uh, four by four off road vehicles are doing amazing now. That is certainly true. It is, but also pickup trucks are too. Yes. Um, Lion Runner said, uh, I wonder if TFL would be interested to buy an imported and restored classic Defender and put it head to head on the trail with a new one. That would be very Aren't you going to go check uh, one out? Kind of, sort of. Um, so in two weeks, I'm going to Florida and I'm going to be driving a rest, resto mod version of a old Land Rover, but it has a power source that's Pretty remarkable. I'm very excited for that. Yes. And finally, one one more question here: uh, V8 Defender, when it is available, or Mercedes G Wagon? Ooh! Right uh, did you see the wisp of smoke coming out of my ear? Yeah. <laughs> I think you fried my synapse. Um, that's a really tough one. You know what? I probably go Land Rover, and the reason why is because I grew up in Southern California. And 90% of the people who are driving through Beverly Hills in G-Wagons, I hate. <laughs> I do. So I'd hate myself. I'd be like Smeagol in Lord of the Rings. I'd hate myself and love myself at the same time because I would love having it, but I'd hate myself every morning going, I'm one of those guys. So no, this, 
I know I can take off-road and I can make it into the off-roader that I want by comparison. So I don't think I'd get the uh, G-Wagon. And I know Case, who's holding the phone right now, is about to shove it down my throat. He loves G-Wagons. So I think as we start wrapping up, I mean, I think that I really had kind of like a shift in my, my mindset with the Defender and, and the ownership experience because um, Defender, right, brings up thoughts of squared off uh, Land Rovers chugging through northern and western and eastern Africa, right? And they, they've got solid axles and they can go anywhere and they're very off-road worthy. This is very different than that, right? This is not a rock crawler. This is not a solid axle vehicle. It is much more luxurious and that kind of bugged me at first. But when you kind of consider the new market that this vehicle is going after, an ultra luxurious, uh, incredibly capable vehicle that'll take you 1,500, 2,000 miles across dirt roads and through washboard and that kind of thing. It's perfect. Like I took this on a big road trip through South Dakota on and off road and it was amazing. Like as a road tripper, that is where the Defender shines. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is at the time, we're like a lot of you guys, we're like betting, oh, it's gonna fall apart, it's gonna explode. It didn't, and Tommy tried, I think, too. Yeah, the, 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 the blue one, I really put, really put through its paces. Uh, electrics were fine. Um, no electrical gremlins. The suspension, the air suspension was good. It will overheat if you go up and down too much. So like if you're going off road, you're better off leaving it in the height, otherwise it'll... Right, if you keep adjusting the height at the billows and everything, uh, it doesn't like it very much. But that, that's one issue. And I think that exists with other products that do the same thing. I will say this about these vehicles. If Land Rover's listening, which they're not, but our JLR, I would say, give us a version of this with a six cylinder, that has 17 inch wheels, so we can put big, chunky, proper off-road tires on there. A little bit more protection underneath, because that is something that's missing. It doesn't have a lot of armor uh, yeah, underneath. that's a good point. And it really needs it because you got a lot of maniacs like Roman who are <laughs> going off-road and banging it against rocks, and it's only a matter of time before you break something really expensive. I think if you want to see something really cool, I went on something called the Land Rover Trek which was like a throwback mini. And you won. I, we did win our, 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 our category. It was pretty cool. But it was like a competition off-road in souped up four-cylinder defenders with black steelies, Duratrack tires. They were rack. so cool. Yeah, they had the, the winch on the front. I think they should build that, just sell it as like the off-road version. It and would sell. It would be really cool. But overall, this Land Rover, I mean, it, the blue one was perfect. We sold it to fund the Defender a little while back, but um, it's a good Just road tripper. Just to get tripper. the Bronco, you mean? Sorry. Sold the Defender <laughs> to fund the Bronco, yeah. Good road tripper. Pretty good off-road, especially if you're just looking for an overlander. And um, hard to get right now. People love them that much. They're really hard to get. One final thing. I don't... You know, white vehicles are hard to pull off. An awful lot of vehicles look crap when they're all white. This doesn't. And that means that in any color, these things shine. And I do agree with they that. They do look cool. There's a good looking design. It yeah. really is. Yeah, for sure. Do well, we have anything before we go? Cool. Let All us right. know what you guys think in the comment section. Nathan, thank you for your help. My pleasure. Appreciate it. We'll see you on another episode of the TFL Now live show. All right. Cheers, guys.